Steve, what do you think about some of the new Sightman brakes on the market? Well, Sightman has become very fashionable very quickly, um, which is a good thing. And some of the equipment manufacturers have kind of jumped on that fashion bandwagon, so now there's demand for Sightman equipment, and these guys are trying to meet that demand. Um, However, you can see when you look at some of the rigs that are out there that the people who design them have really very little experience of side mount diving um, because the rigs really just don't work. Um, and they're poorly designed. They're sort of like someone's idea of maybe what a side mount rig should look like without having the experience to know what actually works in the water. Sometimes things that look like they're good ideas on the surface uh, when you actually take them in, wa in the water and try to dive them, um, then obviously uh, that doesn't really work very effectively. And obviously the more challenging the environment becomes, then the more it's going to point out the flaws and weaknesses in a particular equipment configuration. So whereas some of these new side mount rigs may work okay in the open water, where it's not quite so important that your equipment is streamlined and easy to use, if you then try and take that equipment into a more changing environment such as a cave or a wreck penetration, you're going to discover um, that things don't work quite the way they should. The equipment maybe has uh, more snag points or danglies um, than it should have, but it's maybe harder to use than it should be if the, if the tanks in really the right position. Uh, there's a lot more to side mount diving than just hanging the tanks off the side of your body. And obviously the uh, side mount harness is the core of a good equipment configuration. But all of the rest of the equipment, including how you have your side mount tank set up, how you have your regulators set up, and all the ancillary equipment is just as important as well. And you should have a holistic approach to your equipment configuration. And each component is part of an overall whole. And they should all work in a very complementary fashion. And you shouldn't have one piece of equipment getting in the way of another piece of equipment or making them certain <coughs> skills or procedures more difficult, which I think um, many of these side mount uh, harnesses that have just recently come onto the market are unnecessarily complicated and over-engineered uh, and have a lot of features that are just designed to perhaps sell them when they're sitting on the shelf. Uh, don't ha really have much function when they're in the water. As I said before, they have a very minimalist approach to diving in general and particularly towards equipment configuration and if you don't need it, they'll take it with you. Really try and cut everything back um, as much as possible and take the least amount of equipment you can in the water um, while still maintaining adequate levels of safety and redundancy. Obviously, in any manufacturing industry, when someone comes out with a, a good idea, then a lot of people are going to copy that idea and we see that happening in Sideman as well, um, where there are a number of manufacturers who actually know what they're doing um, in building side mount rigs uh, because they've been designed and built by people who actually go side mount diving and have quite a lot of experience and you can see that experience in uh, the rigs that they've constructed. Now other manufacturers are just shortcutting that process, they don't have the experience, they don't have the knowledge about side mount diving but they want to be able to offer a product to people so they're just copying what's existing on the market. They have really no deep underlying understanding of how that equipment was put together or why it was put together a certain particular way or they take what they think are the best ideas from two or three different places and they try and put them all together in one equipment configuration and you lose the whole essence and idea of the original configuration because of that so you know like anything to be a good instructor requires experience to be um, a good manufacturer of dive equipment then you know that needs to be driven by divers who have experience doing that type of diving in the environment the equipment's intended for, uh, who can give feedback on what works and what doesn't work in a real world environment rather than in a theoretical cyber diving world. Why did you come up with the razor harness? Over the years I've used a number of different side mount systems and all of them worked um, to one extent or another. Uh, usually I had to modify them quite a bit to, to suit me uh, and the type of diving that I was doing um, and I was it was always a compromise there was always some issues that I wasn't completely happy with some things that I thought could be better or could be changed 
but I was constrained to a certain extent by the original design of uh, the side mount harness. Um, while exploring in SACAC 2, uh, the dives were becoming more and more challenging and they were demanding more and more from me as a diver and of my equipment. And I was finding um, that I was actually being limited in the type of dives I could do by the equipment that I was using. And it was also um, becoming really hard on the equipment as well. And over the course of six months, I think I destroyed like three or four side mount rigs, um, which really uh, was becoming frustrating constantly having to get new side mount rigs to be able to go exploring with. So I thought after a while, you know, I should really sit down and, and spend some time and design a side mount rig for myself, the type of diving that I was doing that would work for exactly the specific application that I had. And so I wanted to start from scratch, really go back to basics with no preconceived ideas, not using any existing piece of equipment that was on the market and being sort of like locked into a certain direction or constrained by uh, an existing type of, of a, um, equipment configuration. Uh, and always at the back of my head was to have a very minimalist um, set up that was modular in design so that I could always add things to it as I needed to but it would always strip down to this very minimalist um, harness for as diving became more challenging. So I wanted a system that would work for doing long range scooter multiple stage dives that would work for side mount dives but would also work in the very small no mount areas of the cave where I was finding myself spending a lot of time exploring. Uh, where I wouldn't really have to change anything um, as I was going through these various different levels. So I could go in with the scooters and the stages, I could drop those, I'd be down to side mount, really nothing on the harness changed. And once I'd finished with the side mount tanks and I was snow mounting, then again, you know, the position of the tanks might change, but the harness pretty much remained the same and all the components um, remained in the same place um, and fulfilled the same functions. So. Having successfully achieved that over sort of like probably um, a year of trial and error and sort of like finding out what worked and what didn't work uh, and constantly making modifications, which I'm still doing uh, up until the present day, constantly you know rethinking things and trying to improve things and make modifications. I came up with a, a system that I say I'm I'm 98% happy with. There's always room for improvement, but it's by far you know, the best equipment configuration, the most comfortable equipment configuration, the easiest to dive equipment configuration that I, I've used up until now. Um, so that made my diving much easier. I felt it made my diving safer. Uh, I felt that it extended what I could do and the areas of the cave that I could get into, so it made my exploration more effective. So for me, it worked fantastic, uh, and I was really, really happy with it. I didn't really have an idea at that point of like marketing this equipment to other people or even training other side mount divers in it. Um, but at the time, you know, obviously I, I, I teach, I guide, uh, I'm teaching side mount courses, and I was having students come along who didn't have any equipment, and I was trying my new harness on them, and I discovered that very quickly um, they got very comfortable. So they progressed very, very fast using this system as opposed to um, some of the other rigs that, that they would turn up with before. Um, and pretty much, so long as the harness is set up properly by someone who knows what they're doing, after the first day in the water, these guys already look like side mount divers. They're pretty much 90% dialed in. And they feel great. They feel really comfortable. Um, and they feel that they can use the uh, side mount equipment really quickly and, and really effectively. So after like a two or three days uh, of diving, they actually look better than probably the majority of side mount divers out there who've been diving for many, many years and, and many dives. So after a while, I actually stopped teaching side mount in anything but the razor harness because um, what I was finding was students would come up come to the course with, with another system and by the end of the course they all wanted to switch into the Razor Harness anyway. Um, or I was finding, I was spending so much time reconfiguring uh, their equipment to make it work that we'd lose two or three days of, of training just tweaking things to get it right, whereas I could spend half a day 
fitting the razor harness to them, and it was right straight off the bat.